Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I am going to be reading some stories submitted by my subscribers. We have a little bit of revenge, a little bit of entitlement, a Karen, all the good stuff. So without further ado, let's jump into the stories, shall we? <laughs> Entitled on Steroids. This is a shorter one, but it chronicles my experience with one of the most entitled strangers I ever had to deal with. I used to be a literary agent, I'm now primarily a writer and writing coach, and one day I got a call from, presumably, a prospect. She was an older woman, probably in her 80s, and she wanted me to ghostwrite a book for free, then represent it as her work to a publisher. At this point, I'd already ghostwritten maybe half a dozen books, so the request, except for the free part, wasn't unusual. Look, I think your memoir might be marketable. I told her, but I don't work for free, and except for my role as literary agent, I don't work on commission, so I can ghostwrite your book, but I can't ghostwrite it for free. I expected her to be a bit chagrined for being caught out demanding free work from a stranger, but instead she pushed back. Hard. Listen to me, young man. I'm a survivor of Nazi Germany's death camps. That's what my memoir is about and you must write it. You owe me for all I had to do to survive. That was actually just the beginning of the conversation, or rather, the one-way rant. She played every possible card in her deck. The death camp victim, assuming it's true, that was horrible beyond belief, but I didn't cause it, and neither did anyone in my family. The sufferer of the Jewish pogrom, little did she know, that before I was adopted by my parents, I was born to a young Jewish woman, so that didn't faze me. And there was more, a lot more, but I'm sure you get the picture. I was floored, flabbergasted, almost dumbfounded, but I also know that I didn't owe her a damn thing. If she asked me nice, if she hadn't been so entitled, I probably would have given her a bargain basement rate for ghostwriting her book. However, I didn't owe her, and that was the hill she chose to die on. I wasn't a Nazi. Hell, I'm a boomer. I wasn't even alive in the mid-40s. So I told her so, and it went something like this. Lady, I'm sorry for what you went through, but just because you suffered, I don't owe you anything. In fact, you might just owe me. Dead silence on the other end. You see, I wasn't even born when you were in the death camp, but my father and my uncle both fought in the war, shedding blood to help free you from your captivity. One of my uncle's ships was dive-bombed by a German Stuka, and he still carries the scars. My dad's ship was attacked four times, barely surviving each time. They put their lives on the line to save you. So tell me again how I owe you anything. That shut her up, and she never called me back. I am truly sorry for anyone who had to survive that literal hell on earth, and I deeply admire those who are able to put their lives back together. But that doesn't obligate me to anything, no matter how entitled they are. Good for you, my friend. One of my biggest pet peeves are people that think that the world owes them something. What she went through is undoubtedly terrible and tragic, and I do feel for her deeply. My great-grandparents too lived in Germany during this time, and I've heard many stories, but I would have hoped and figured that living through such events would have made this woman a more empathetic and kind person, not a tyrant. Seems a bit contradictory, but I'm not a psychologist. However, I'm sure what you said made an impact, and hopefully she remembered this encounter with you from then on forward when she decided to try and play the entitled card. <laughs> Vengeance against a real bee with an itch can be a real bee with an itch. Okay, so this has got all the elements, an unfaithful fiance, corporate intrigue, and ultimate revenge. So buckle your seatbelt and let's get started. This happened a while ago, but as you'll see, it has stayed with me. I had been a very well-paid exec at a billion dollar corporation, but when it got bought out, I was given a choice. Relocate to Dallas or take my generous three-week severance package. 
I didn't figure the Dallas job would last even three months, so I took my severance and decided to start a business. It started in a duplex. I had the downstairs and the basement, but it was dirt floored and completely unfinished, good only for storage. And the back room was my bedroom. The upper floor was occupied by a college student, his stay-at-home wife, and their little crotch goblin, a cute kid who loved to play with the volume knob on dad's super stereo. Not conducive to a business environment. It started out solo, but soon I brought in a partner, someone I'd mentored in an earlier life. Mistake number one. Soon the business was doing well, and so were we, I thought, and given time, we got engaged. Life was good. Mistake number two. We added a couple of staff members, so I bought out the lease of the college student and moved upstairs, giving us an extra office room downstairs. Things seemed to be going good. Then, while I was on a business trip to Bakersfield, California, we were based in Nashville, I had this powerful gut feeling that something was very wrong back home. No reason I could see for this feeling, but it was powerful and wouldn't let me go. A few days later, I was back home and a very apologetic partner slash fiance told me that, in a fit of weakness, she'd slept with the plant guy, the guy who took care of our office plants and such. Not what I wanted to hear, but she was a fox and seemed truly repentant, so I agreed to move past this. Mistake number three. Eventually, because her behavior turned out to be a pattern, we ended plans for marriage, but we were still in a business together. No problem, right? Basically, I handled doing the work for our clients as I was far more experienced than my partner, but she took on prospecting for new business because she was easy on the eyes and, as I'd learned, good at manipulating people. But business wasn't as good as it had once been, and I didn't know why. What I did know was that when cash flow sucked, I had to pay my employees out of pocket using American Express Platinum card checks. Yes, business had been good, at least for a while. Still, new clients were harder to find and money was tight. I chalked it up to our variable economy. There were clues I ignored. While I slept upstairs in the duplex we rented, my partner bought first one house, then another, and rented out the first one. We paid each other 20k a year, putting the rest of our profits back into the business, and it shouldn't have taken me any time to figure out that she was getting money from somewhere. I knew it wasn't from family, as they were dirt poor East Tennessee hillbillies. Until finally, I discovered that not only was my partner signing clients personally to her her, not to the business, and half of our employees were working for her nights and weekends to fulfill those contracts. She'd stolen and shattered my heart, and now she was stealing my business. That pushed me over the edge. Revenge was not just called for, it was a moral imperative. So on the very next Saturday, I contracted a local starving student moving company to come to the office slash my home and pick up some stuff. I took half of everything the business owned, but I took the half I wanted, not what I'd be able to get in negotiations. Since I no longer trusted her, I wasn't taking any more chances. Then I had them drive it to one of those storage buildings where you can rent space. I paid them in cash, no records, since they were the only ones besides me who knew where the stuff was, and proceeded my next step in the process. As the company treasurer, I looked at all of our outstanding bills and debts, and paid off all of them that I'd have to co-sign. Like those American Express line of credit checks I wrote to pay my loyal and my disloyal employees. But only those debts that I could be held personally liable for. Our business was incorporated, but as a startup, many creditors also wanted my personal credit on the line. That left us a grand total of $316 in the bank, with the rent due Monday and lots of creditors still salivating for past due bills. Finally, I deeded over my stock. I had 50% plus one shares, and as chairman, I accepted the tender of those shares. Then I resigned. So when my now former partner showed up Monday morning, the $500 rent was due, as were other bills, and half of everything was gone, including me. 
Shortly thereafter, I landed a truly great job and relocated with my new bride and son to Tampa. However, being prudent, and this was before the internet, I never lived in the city I lived at. So instead of Tampa, I lived in a suburb, but anyone calling information would have to name the town before they could get the number. Prudence. Postscript. Periodically, for almost all of the next decade, I'd been contacted by some lawyer in Nashville saying he represented my ex-partner and demanding a lot of money. I knew that these guys were all working on contingency, they'd only get paid if they won, so I'd write each of them a detailed letter explaining why her charges were full of shit and why they didn't want to waste their time and effort on a lost cause. She could be very persuasive, didn't I know it? But in the face of a lost cause case, none of them ever got back to me, and eventually, she just stopped. As I've told many folks since that time, she only cost me 30k and my self-respect. But the thought of actually marrying such a bitch was really beyond the pale. I thank God for this expensive but cheap at twice the price lesson. I learned it well. Oh boy, did you ever dodge a bullet. Thank God you got the true colors before you got married. I hope the plant guy was worth it for her. I would have loved to have been a fly on the wall to see the look on her face when she came in on Monday, just to see you as well as half the stuff gone. Glad you learned your lesson though, and I do hope you didn't keep any more easy on the eyes gals around, despite their horrible personalities. It wasn't the lesson you wanted, but it was the lesson you needed. Entitled mom demands free airsoft guns, costing $400, and wants to call the police on us. So starting the story, I am a big airsoft freak. The realistic gun replicas that shoot plastic balls if you don't know what airsoft is, and my friend is one as well. One day we took our ASGs and went to the grassy area in the back of my neighborhood. We set up a blanket, set the target down, and started shooting. I had this automatic M4 that my dad bought me some years ago, and my friend had a PDW, assault rifle and submachine gun hybrid. After about 10 minutes, a Karen comes over to us and asked something along the lines of, is this legal guys? You are both teens. So on after we told her what they were, she yelled that her entitled kid to come over, and he did. She demanded to either give her the guns, mine was about $180, his was $250, they are not cheap, or let the kid shoot. She said if we don't agree with her options, she will call the police. We just said okay, and that we needed to go think about it. We didn't want to deal with police, and we didn't want this kid hurting himself or damaging the guns, so we walked away and talked. But we had an ace in our pocket. We pulled the batteries out of the guns. We walked back to the EK and his entitled mom. We give the EK the guns, we showed him how to load it, etc. He pulled the trigger and guess what? Nothing. We had a giggle and said something like, sorry, the battery is probably low. I guess we have to go charge it and come back. By the way, we wouldn't have even if we weren't lying. They charge for like eight hours. But the entitled mom wasn't an airsoft knower, so she let us leave. And we got the F out of there. I always love when Karens demand other people's expensive belongings be given to their kid. At least be thankful you didn't have a Nintendo Switch with you guys, because then you never would have gotten her off your back. Glad you got away scotch free though. Excellent quick thinking. But anyways, that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed those three subscriber stories. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I truly appreciate when you do, and I will see you in the next Reddit stories. Bye!